year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe what we are living through. We hesitate to reflect on all that is around us in 2020. All we know is that it, nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through this stuff, O oh Lord, and come down. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We light this first candle as a sign of hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the stuff of this world. Hope that you can still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light, this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A reading on this first Sunday of Advent from Isaiah. O oh God, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fires kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains, quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You met those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all come like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for
for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, help us in our waiting. Now at this hour, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are a rock and our salvation. Grace and peace to you from God, the Creator, Redeemer, and the One who sustains us. Today we begin the drama again. We first hear of a darkening sun and a moon that gives no light and are told to keep awake. Then the countdown to the telling of the story that is told of a babe born in a manger. Yet, the story does not begin with a babe. It begins with a people. A people who are set apart to be the people of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The words spoken by the people of Israel, people who were given the commandments and the law, a people who often find themselves in and out of trouble people whose names we know, Abraham and Sarah, Cain and Abel, Hannah and Samuel, Moses and Aaron, Ruth, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Isaiah, a people who always felt that they could count on God, a God who kept them, who rescued them, who loved them. Yet here in the 64th chapter of, of Isaiah, things have changed. Hmm. Have you ever felt that God was absent? Amid all that you struggle with, amid the hard things of this year, amid the things you don't understand, do you ever feel that when you need God the most, that is exactly when God is nowhere, <laughs> nowhere to be found. I know that we're not supposed to feel like this. We live as people of God in the security that God is with us always. But sometimes, when life has turned upside down, hmm, we wonder. Well, that is how the children of Israel felt. It has been a long time since God has sent pillars of clouds by day and fire by night, rained manna from heaven or sent plagues upon Pharaoh to help them in their trouble. It's been a long time. God seems to be keeping God's distance. And so the people turn to worshiping idols, being disobedient because it appears as though God is no longer paying attention to who they are and what they are doing. They seem to have forgotten the God they are afraid has forgotten them. Generations after the trek through the wilderness into the promised land, generations later, the Israelites find themselves once again in trouble. Scholars cannot seem to decide if the Israelites are still captive in Babylon or have just returned home to Judah, to harsh living conditions and an econ economy that offered little hope. Some, during this 2020 global pandemic, understand no matter, they are in trouble. Instead of calling on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they fell into an old habit of bowing to pagan gods, gods that those who held them in captive admired. Rulers and leaders, alcohol and drugs, all kinds of small g gods. This isn't working for the prophet Isaiah. In this text for this first Sunday in Advent, Isaiah is ranting and raving as prophets are wont to do. He is trying to get the attention of the people 
and trying to shake God out of his seeming retirement and back to helping the people of Israel. He cries, Oh, that you would tear down the heavens and come down so that the mountains will quake at your presence. Mm. Come down, he cries. Isaiah wants the people to be reminded of the God who is able to help in the times of trouble. And he wants that God to do something, to show the people who God is. Do something so that the people might turn from their disobedience. Do something, anything, God. Just do something. The prophet also wants God to see that somebody remembers who God is. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. The people of God have strayed. And the prophet blames God. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. Isaiah wants God to remember that the Israelites are God's loved and chosen people. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Yes, we are all the work of God's hand. Isaiah wanted God to stop hiding, to come reveal God's self to the people who needed a word from the Lord. Isaiah wanted God to reclaim those who were God's. And I understand that cry. So many times this year I wanted to scream, God, show up and do something. Yet, we wait. Wait for salvation. Wait for redemption. And we as people don't like to wait. We are an instant gratification society. We want everything fast at warp speed. We want our popcorn quick, our potatoes fried, our coffee in an instant. We want technology and we want a cure and a vaccine yesterday. Yet I read somewhere, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. On this first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new church year, it is a good time for us to stop, take a deep breath, to exhale and remember even in amid this year of so much that is strange, disturbing, and different, that God is with us. We remember God's goodness and God's promises. The voices in the secular world tell us that this is the season of hurry and preparation and yet everything this year is different and so we slow down. We hear the voice of Isaiah this Advent calling us to remembrance. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who work for those who wait for him. Let Advent still us, quiet us, prepare us, reclaim us, make us ready for God's greatest event. Let us listen for the stories over and over again. The stories of kings and prophets, of shepherds and stars, of what God did for the people he loved in a manger in Bethlehem years ago. Savor the moments as we recall the happy songs of the Savior as we prepare for the celebration. Let us wait, not rush, not hurry, let us take our time as we hear the story of a God that will return 
we are reminded to be watchful in our waiting. To keep alert. So we stand alert knowing that these stories are our stories as we once again begin the journey through the church year. This is the story where Jesus stands in the center of our waiting. It is the story of God's reclamation. A story where we find ourselves standing at the River Jordan. A story of God's conspiracy against the conspiracies of the world. We begin again recounting the story of God's salvation. This is our story. As we are the ones who wait, we wait not in fear and trepidation, but in anticipation and hope, with eagerness at the edge of our seats to see once again God revealed in our lives, even when it seems so far away, even when we are troubled, and even when we know not what to do. We wait to see God revealed in our gathering, in water and word, in body and blood, in our family and our friends, in our end to sickness and suffering, in the one called Jesus. We wait, alert in hope and anticipation. And we know people of God are waiting will not be in vain. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.